Hello, everyone. There's good news and bad news today. Uh, the good news is we got the words done in a pretty reasonable amount of time, and it was a fairly pleasant time spent doing it. Bad news is I don't know what is going to happen in the story after this point. Um, I knew that Rob kind of needed to get a little bit up to speed, and that's kind of what happens in this one. But beyond that, no idea what's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> This is one of those problems you run into when you don't plan anything and you just dive in to 50,000 words of story. You commit yourself to 30 days of continuous writing. Uh, you sometimes write faster than you're imagining the rest. So that's possibly going to be a problem in coming days. But anyway, that sounded a bit loud. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to take a quick drink. Rob didn't get much done on the eighth day. Creeping paranoia had begun to fester on the outskirts of his psyche, and he dreamt that night of being back in the tower, jumping awake every time the wind caused his window to rattle. On the ninth day, I don't like wind caused window to rattle. I, I mean, there's not a lot I can do about that, really, is there? On the ninth day, he decided he couldn't take it anymore. He took one last look at the slip of paper he'd been glancing at intermittently all of yesterday, and now fully certain he'd completely me memorized the address, he swallowed it. He did this still telling himself that Zack was deranged and everything he'd said was a particularly overblown sort of nonsense. He considered leaving through the window rather than the door, but thought better of it. Of all the things Zack had asserted during his brief yet eventful visit, He'd been right about not being too far away. They were a ten-minute bus ride away. Two away is very close together. He'd not even been particularly surprised when, upon reading the address he'd been issued, he'd found it had been the basement of a local community centre, although in the brief walk from the bus stop to the building, he couldn't help but wonder if everything that had happened was some kind of extremely elaborate prank. That one's a little bit long. <laughs> that one needs a comma somewhere. The building was locked. He had to buzz through. A woman at the reception desk on the other side of a large window saw him approach and waited patiently for his request. Rob wasn't sure what to say, so he told the truth. Hey, I'm here to see Zach. Zachary Morgan? I'm sorry, sir? The reply was obviously confused by his strange request. By the way, this is the third receptionist. <laughs> Apparently when I don't know what to write, I just receptionists appear out of thinner. He said he was renting the basement here. It seemed even more tenuous than it had done a minute ago. There was a long pause on the other end. Sorry, did you say you were looking for Obadiah Walrus? Yes. That were a completely fresh name, by the way. That one went on the list. I just thought of it that morning and was like, yeah, yeah that's going to be the next one. Obadiah Walrus. The door opened. The lady told him to follow the adjoining corridor to the end and go down the stairs. Following her advice, he descended into a cold and unfurnished section of the building beneath the surface, still wondering what madness might be waiting for him. There were only two rooms down there, one a visible star room locked by a keypad, and the other a strange door lurking in a dark and uninviting corner. There, there were perspex panels in the door that had been blocked by newspaper and tape. The latter one felt like it, the latter one felt like the right place. I think I will need to make it more obvious that I'm saying that the second door seems like the correct one. Um, it seems like I'm talking about the newspaper and tape, and uh, what do you mean? It means the second door was the right door. He knocked on the door. Immediately, he heard unseen figures scrambling. Who's there? Zach, or possibly Obadiah Walrus, called through the door. Rob, what's the password? There is no password. Zach opened the door greeting him with a wide grin. He turned back and shouted to his cohorts, I told you Rob was waiting. Rob glanced over his shoulder to see two de dejected-looking women in the background. April waved. All right, April, Rob called. He was slightly excited to see her, as he assumed wrongly that she might be able to act as a translator from Zack to English. You haven't met Piper yet, right? Zack motioned at the other woman, who was lying in the floor in the exact centre of the room, staring up at the ceiling. She made no attempt to include herself in the conversation even after Rob offered her his usual greeting. All right. 
so there's the uh <laughs> we've been building up to it all this time there's the introduction of piper she's just lying on the floor in the middle of the room and doesn't say anything or do anything <laughs> i thought well worth it everyone let me talk to him outside one minute Zack told the room in general, before beginning the process of shoving Rob back outside and closing the door behind him. What's up? Rob asked suspiciously, making only a token effort to resist being shoved outside by the smaller man. You're lucky you caught us, dude. We're moving in a day or two, Zack told him. I'm sure. Rob was unimpressed. You know you can rent actual houses these days? Nothing on the books, Zack explained. You're paranoid, Rob told him flatly. Or, everyone's out to get me, right? He chuckled. Anyway, he leaned in to speak in a conspiratorial whisper. You wanted to talk to April, right? That was the plan. Well, I'm just warning you up front, she's not doing well. Thanks, Zach, Rob offered fatally. Just, you know, don't look at it, all right? She's kind of sensitive about the whole situation. As usual, Rob had no idea what, the, what he was talking about. I thought you said she made a full recovery. More or less... The door opened behind them, and April appeared in the doorway. Rob, you wanted to talk? Rob nodded. Then we'll talk. She turned to her partner in crime. Zack, can you go away for a minute? Zack nodded. Go back in, Rob. Don't worry about Piper. She's cool. Piper had not moved a single inch since Rob, since Rob had looked in previously, though her eyes followed him as he passed. The floor did not look comfortable. Rob and April sat down at a small folding table that had been set up against the one wall that wasn't covered in exposed heat heating pipes. At some point, April turned her head, and the light caught her... Sorry. At some point, April turned her head, and the light caught her at just the wrong angle. Rob wasn't particularly observant, but the extent of the wound was hard to miss. April was wearing a baggy hoodie and a beanie partly because it was freezing in the basement whenever the heating wasn't running, and partly to cover up the damage. Her hair had been shaved on the side of her head that the Azalot had got a piece of, and the lower half of her ear should have been exposed beneath the bottom of the hat, but was not visible. The entire side of her face was thick with padded bandage, dyed slightly crimson in the middle where the wound had wept. Rob tried to imagine the extent of the wound beneath the bandage. It's kind of copying a sentence I've just said, um, very closer. Realised it must be far worse than Zack had let on. A moment later, he realised he was staring. April had obviously realised too. When she spoke, it was evident from the tone that she was more or less at her wit's end. Yeah, that's about as bad as it looks. Rob was acutely aware that she'd taken the hit to save him. Didn't know what to say. Doctor says I'm not supposed to talk if I can avoid it. Her voice was still pained, and she was making an effort to move her mouth as little as possible as she spoke. What do you want to know? Rob considered his question carefully, picking the most pressing one, as he wasn't sure how many he might get. What is happening? That's a pretty big question, Rob. April tried to smile, immediately realising that this was a bad idea as a stab of pain ran through her. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just... I'm way behind, apparently. Rob didn't know what to tell her. Seeing, seeing her again was like seeing a ghost, and the whole situation had a dreamlike quality about it, especially while he hadn't been sleeping thing at Cooper Booth. That happened, right? I'm the wrong person to ask. You saw a tiger, right? Jaguar, Rob corrected, not knowing he knew the answer before he'd said it. He'd thought as a lot. Oh, April appeared thoughtful. I remember it being bigger, I imagine. Anyway, let's give what's happening a go. And then I kind of did a weird thing for this. It would. This is just fucking exposition, just a big exposition dump. But I wanted to make it a little bit weird. I tried to make it... This obviously will not be in this form if I ever finish it, because I don't really know where I'm going with a lot of the things, and I'll need to think about them more. But um, for this section, April's speech is just completely on its own with no stage direction. And the only stage directions from Rob. Uh it was just a weird uh like style change that I thought I'd do. I don't know, I wanna keep kinda of changing it up at some points just for a little bit. It's only gonna be a short section. But just to keep you on your toes, you know. Somewhere outside the scope of space and matter and human perception, there are powerful creatures. 
The presence or even attention of these things can have catastrophic effects on our world. One of them, it seems, has decided to end it. What's happening right now is the slow death of the planet. Think things are weird now? It's going to get way worse in short order. Rob could feel the presence, immense and powerful, weighing on him as it had back at the tower when he'd almost become prey. It was looking right now, in that basement. Once you knew it was there, it was always looking. It would always be looking. They're normally so far outside the scope of us and our little lives down here that they'd never even notice us. If they stray too close, metaphorically speaking, they have some kind of effect on people. Once you know about them, it can be hard to think of anything else. Enough people thinking about them at once and it starts to get their attention. Once you get their attention, they start meddling. People start to build idols to the things, to worship them, and do things in their name. At that point, they're not just watching, they're interested. The longer it goes on, the worse it gets, the more power they'll be able to exert. Why do you think it's the end of the world? Rob interjected. Maybe it's not the end of the world. Probably just the end of us. Almost certainly the end of society as we know it. It's hard to tell what could happen. There's no real precedent for it. Judging by how crazy the world has been growing recent, as of recent, it's fair to say nothing good will come of it. This has happened before, kind of, but on a far smaller scale. Didn't end well. Didn't end well. Didn't end well then, either. You said you'd never heard of Coldwell? Rob shook his head. Doesn't ring any bells. I don't believe you. You must have seen the adverts or something. It was kind of a Halloween-themed holiday resort. Real cheesy. Rob searched the extent of his memory for any relevant information. Came up blank. Genuinely don't remember. Well, one of them crashed here. A little one, I guess. Crashed into the ocean and drowned off the shore. Spent the next 50 or so years trying to rebuild itself from the disjointed bits of meat and consciousness, drowning over and over again in the process. Long story short, the town fell into disarray. People went nuts. Weird things started to happen. There's no Coldwell Resort anymore. We're looking at a sim similar situation for the entire planet. Rob wasn't sure what to trust, so he left it to his gut. Either he'd back away slowly out of the entire situation, move somewhere remote, change his name, and leave all of this insanity behind him, or he'd tell her the thing that was weighing on him. He said, I think I saw one. April was taken aback. I'd be very interested to hear about that, Rob. We did do stage direction for that one when she was surprised. The rest of it, we just did the speech. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like it. I think it works. And it's just, it's just a brief little bit. So it's flavor more than substance. I don't want to properly just dump stuff on you. Ever. I want... The information has to be immediately relevant. Um, or like just real cool flavor. Otherwise, we're not going to bother saying it. Now I'm going to bother thinking about it. I don't need to know. I do think about it a little bit. I do want to get it straightened out. And I've got like a couple of ideas for where we're going after this, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, there's a lot of directions we could go in. Who knows? Yeah, um, we'll see. I'm a little bit worried about moving on from here. But, I don't know, we got like, this is day 18. We're 18 days in. If only the last 12 days a superfluous garbage that's still pretty good uh, output for, for one month. Yeah, and I'm still liking it. And I, I think it's pretty, I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Also, uh, like April's, when am I thinking about it? Like Rob was the one who was supposed to get hit. And it's just given him a big scare and that'd have been it. But, um, I don't know, when I were writing the scene, you know, April just dived in there. She did it on her own. It's the character. And I didn't want it to be like, the heroes are only ever going to get, like, minor scratches. So, she's kind of messed up on just one side of her entire head. We'll see where we go with that. I think she's lost half an ear. Um, and just just a big mess. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's about it. Sorry. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. This seems like a short one, but uh, 
I can't think of anything else. So we'll leave it there. This is going to be the shortest one. I don't know why this is the shortest one. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll see what we do next time. Thank you for showing up. Uh, if anyone's got anything to say about any of this, by the way, just just <laughs> leave me a comment or something. Uh, oh, I've been watching um the the dude I'm watching who was streaming now. Now he's still going. That dude's streams are so chill and nice, and I love them. And he's <laughs> he's such a good boy. <laughs> God, William is is young on uh, on Twitch. It's, <laughs> it's like just me. I'm normally the only viewer. Come join me. Ah, uh, that's all. See you, folks.